The Barrel House is brought to you by you, the listener, and those of you who have chosen to support the show over at patreon.com slash barrelhouse, especially our Whiskey Legend tier patrons, Greg, Katie, Lauren, and Joe. Without you, the show wouldn't be possible. Hello, and welcome to The Barrel House. Yes, and welcome back to The Barrel House. I am your humble host, Joe Kane, and today we're going to dig into one of my top-tier daily drinker sort of bourbons, one I love to go back to as often as possible, although it is not easy any longer to get your hands on it, which does affect whether or not I feel comfortable calling it a daily drinker at this point. Uh, It's on the line. It's on the line. It depends on where you are currently. Before we get into that, however, it's promo time. Uh, The Film Appraiser's newest episode will come out, I believe, if time still works the same way I think it does, tomorrow as this hits the main feed. For patrons, it'll be a little bit later on. I don't know. I'm having a rough time doing calendar calculations out in the future, so I think we got it. I think we're good. Speaking of patrons, if you choose to support the show, check me out, patreon.com slash barrelhouse. Anyway, Knight's Tale, super fun. I'm going to do my absolute best to not go into any really loud, really annoying Paul Bettany, Jeffrey Chaucer impressions here. That was a great time, though. I'm glad we did that. That was a listener suggestion, which obviously comes from a listener and Film appraisers and this show and the other shows at Igloo Media all share a Discord, which you can get your invite to at igloomedia.com slash Discord. And that's where that show really, where that movie really got its push because it was suggested and Josh was a little on the fence and our listeners there in the Discord really pushed for it. So if you want to affect that show or this show, the best way to do that directly is to take that invite at igloomedia.com slash Discord. Come on in and tell us what you think we should be doing or me what I think you think I should be doing. Live streams, another one coming up this weekend. And then after that, as it's shaping up, I've got a couple of in-studio guests lined up back to back, I believe. So I'm really looking forward to that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. It was a great time having Greg on, who, by the way, also has recently sent me texts of pictures of him drinking whiskey on his own time without my influence so i think i'm winning i think i am still at a hundred percent conversion rate for people who might be on the fence with whiskey and needed me to give them a little push so i'm pretty pumped to be that influence on people we'll go with that influence on people that's the right wording anyway today buffalo trace straight bourbon whiskey So Buffalo Trace as a brand has really had no hesitation proudly proclaiming themselves the oldest continuously operating distillery in America. I've seen every, there's a lot of brands that want to claim they've been around longer than other people or whatever it might be. But this distillery does have its origins date back to pioneers in the 1700s. And the name even comes, the Buffalo Trace distillery name even comes from the buff, the traces buffalo traces which are the trails left by the buffalo in that area um we have lightly touched on this distillery's meteoric rise to popularity in recent years and a couple other episodes and on a couple of live streams have talked about how all of their products have gotten to the point where they're really hard to get at a reasonable price but that does not mean if you can can find them at that reasonable price you shouldn't buy them because even a little bit inflated most of their stuff very worth a little bit of extra this is no exception. Um, the, the bottle itself was introduced in 1999, likely after getting really tired of being asked for Buffalo Trace whiskey when it was not a bottle you could buy, but a brand name instead, um, or a distillery name instead. Um, so in 1999, this came out, and this is... A six to eight year old, 90 proof, easy to drink whiskey that is supposed to be. I mean, when I've seen it, you know, back when I could get it regularly, it was around $28 a bottle. Uh, it's regularly between 
40 and 45 here, which I don't think I would go that high. Although I do find it for like 35 ish, pretty like once in a while. And I usually buy a couple bottles when I see it there. This bottle I'm reviewing today is one that I picked up in, I think I grabbed three that day that were $35 because that's about as low as I ever see them. And it is a great bottle to have if you can get it. I think I might go to 40 with it, especially if I hadn't had it before, but above that, it's tough tough to justify as far as talking about this today when i'm thinking about how it stacks up i'm going to think of this as a 30 35 dollar bottle that's about where i feel like it's msrp and value lie um and just keep that in mind when you're think when you're thinking about if you want to buy it keep that in mind so with no further ado and without any gilding of the lily at all or whatever he says in that movie on the nose, I get baked apples and cinnamon, brown sugar and butter, get charred oak, but it's light. And you get this really easy, light, but very present orange zest. There's vanilla on this thing, but it is a it's like when you add a drop of vanilla extract to something in a pretty severe ratio of other thing to vanilla extract and you just get this kind of like aura of vanilla. And then there's a subtle mintiness or green note. It might not be mint. I think it's mint though. Um, it's not Knob Creek minty, but it is a subtle mintiness on the periphery here. It's not overpowering or really present. You might not even notice it unless you're really looking for it, but it's there. This is, so the nose on this is the most like walking into a kitchen and smelling fresh baked apple pie that I, that I can think of anywhere near this price point, right? This reminds me so much of like going to my grandmother's on holidays and smelling that fresh baked apple pie or she used to she used to make me my own apple pie for my birthday because she knew I absolutely loved grandma's apple pie. This one really lands in there. I have a store pick of this also that I was drinking with Greg on the live stream and that one is a great example of how far apart store picks can be because that one is very cherry forward and I don't have any cherry on this and there's way less apple and there's way more brown sugar and way less cinnamon I don't think I had any orange zest really on that that barrel off the top of my head this one though really feels like a fresh soft apples red baked soft apples kind of apple pie however the really dense especially for the proof at 90 proof uh, the nose is really dense but when you get to the palate, it simplifies an awful lot. It thins right out. It's still very good, but it's it's considerably empty comparatively. The vanilla and caramel are there for sure. The brown sugar is there, but almost like you get like, so you get this oaky note, um, more oak than you got in the nose. And then it tastes sort of like that oak has a little brown sugar sprinkled on it. Uh, the brown sugar itself, pretty light in this comparatively. There's a buttery, that buttery note from the nose kind of presents as a buttery toffee, kind of buttery here in the palate. And that's a little more present, but that's really it. It's really, it's really sweet. It's really light, it's really easy. This is a great one to just have a glass of when you're hanging out and you don't want to deal with high proof or too much pepper or too much burn. You don't want to deal with any of that. You just want to relax and enjoy a real easy drink, right? This one probably falls in the category of smooth or approachable. This is definitely in that area. Um, the finish. The finish is definitely where the oak is the strongest and more, most dominant. You get a lot more oak than you got on the nose or the palate. And you get a lot of what the palate had to offer, but it's less intense 
There's, it's more tannic and a little more peppery. There's a little bit of pep, like black pepper on the tongue in the finish. And you get this short to moderate length finish here. Nothing wild, nothing overly complex, relatively balanced. And you just get the flavors from the palate kind of roll away. Um, it's not going to wow you with its complexity in the palate or the finish. Um, I think the most impressive thing on this whiskey to me is the nose at the proof and price. The palate is palette is really good for the price, but it is not like, holy shit, good for the price. It's just really good for a $30, $35 whiskey. Um, it's a really great daily drinker. I mean, overall, it's a great, great daily or like budget bottle to have around if you can get it for budget. Um, it's a great beginner's bourbon, so if you're edging your way in, I mean, you even saw that on the live stream I had with Greg on. It was the first one I gave him, and he was, like, kind of surprised by how easy it was. Um, it's a great beginner's bourbon, whiskey in general, to be honest with you, but definitely for the bourbon category, it's a great for beginners. But it still has enough, it's still pleasant enough of a pour and experience overall for people who've had a lot of whiskey and are deep into this to still enjoy a pour, right? Yeah, I don't know anybody who doesn't like it. I find it a little boring sometimes, but when I don't want complex and thoughtful whiskey and I just want to drink something and enjoy it, this is a great, boring is fine for that. I would definitely say it's an excellent grab if you can get it for MSRP or close. I wouldn't go more than 35 or 40 if you haven't had it before. I feel like 40 is probably the outside limit here. Um, but maybe if you really want to try it and you've never had it, maybe 45 one time ever. But I think at $45, you're going to be disappointed because there are so many whiskeys that are better in that 45 to $55 range. Once you kind of get up into that category price wise, the value proposition for this changes wildly so keep that in mind when you're looking for this um yeah i mean this is the same thing i said for blanton's which is another buffalo the other buffalo trace product that we really talked about this on uh the popularity the rarity has driven the price up beyond the quality of the whiskey so ah man it's tough i i definitely think this is like a where your like personal priorities fall in if you keep hearing about this online and you really want to try it, just buy the bottle, even if it's 50 bucks. If you're going to be, if you're going to get $50 for the satisfaction out of the overall experience, just being able to say you've had it, then do it. But don't do it more than once. It's not worth it. It's really not worth more than 35 to have around. Um, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, this is a simple episode for a simple bourbon. It's a great one to have. It's a great one to have around. I'm going to start trying to do, so I've had a, a couple of questions come in on like the Instagram and stuff. And, and instead of doing like one ep, one, um, one question in an episode or answering them on Instagram or whatever, I think I'm going to try to start organizing a like Q and a on Instagram live or, uh, maybe a Q and a on Patreon or something like that. I haven't quite figured that out yet. So, uh, send in questions you have just in general about me about whiskey about podcasting about whiskey how that all works uh to barrelhousepodcast at gmail.com and i will update you guys as to how that works what that looks like once i get that whole thing figured out um like i said earlier if you want to interact directly hit me up on the discord at eargluemedia.com slash discord please rate and review the show on iTunes. It only takes a second and it means an awful lot. You can get your social media links and everything else you could possibly need at barrelhousepodcast.com. That website's been updated, so there's places to watch the live streams and to listen to the episodes. And I believe fairly soon those episodes will even be available on the archived even on the Facebook page. Um, I don't know how soon, but soon that's going to be a thing. Also, like jump on Instagram and comment or subscribe or follow whatever. All those things are on fairlosspodcast.com, all those links. 
one of my favorite things about doing this show is getting to interact with you all, not just not just talk to you through the mic, but to get some real two-way interactions, whether it be wherever it might be, Discord, email, social media, whatever. So so don't hesitate. I promise I don't bite. Jump in there. Uh, the few of you who have reached out have been great. I've had some great conversations with you guys. So I'm looking forward to seeing a few more of you take me up on that. Uh, like I said at the beginning, patreon.com slash barrel house to support the show. You are all who have been there are all awesome. And you do not know how much it means to me that you have. Like I'm humbled every time I jump on and see that there's a new patron or even every month when I see that nobody's left yet, right? That stuff means the world to me. So uh, thank you so much. And for those of you thinking about doing it, go right ahead. And if you have questions about what that looks like, go ahead and reach out and ask me about that too. Um, if you can't, don't want to, aren't ready to yet, that's also fine. Just please spread the word about the show. Uh, the show has been actually been growing at a pretty good rate and I'm really, really happy about that. And I really, I I, I I keep saying it. It's like a broken record. I know I thank all of you. Thank you so much for, for all that support, however it shows. Um, that's really all I have for today. Thank you all so much until next time. Drink whiskey, be merry and take care. The Barrel House is written, produced, and hosted by Joe Kane, and it's a proud member of the Earglue Media Network. Views and opinions expressed on this show belong only to the mouth they came out of. And as always, please remember to drink responsibly. Slangevat.